All right, welcome to another episode of Stoked About Science. We're here at uh, Stedman's Ranch, and they've got this awesome water slide, as you can see here. And the question we want to try to figure out is, does your weight affect it? Well, I think it does affect it. It seems like people that weigh more, when there's more than one person on the tube, you go faster. So we're going to try to do a little experiment here and figure out what's the relationship between the weight on the tube and on how fast you go. So the idea here is that um, I don't have a way to gauge the speed. I didn't bring my radar gun or anything. So we're going to time how long it takes the tube to go between two points that are maybe, I don't know, 40 meters apart, something like that, 30 meters. Uh, anyway, we're going to time how long it takes with using the same tube but putting different people of different sizes on it and then maybe multiple people. So let's see what happens. All right, so I'm going to go down this now. I mean, science is a tough job, right? Somebody's got to do it. So here we go. Get started here. Come on now. All right. Here we go. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Okay, so I've taken the data that we collected and put it into Excel and it made this nice little chart here and uh, sorted it. So you can see Krissa here is the lightest at 50 pounds and then down to me I'm the heaviest at 175. Now we can kind of look at the numbers and ask ourselves you know is there kind of a pattern here? And it looks like we're starting in the low seven seconds um, which means it's taking the longest for the light kids and then we're going down to in the fives for the heavier people. Uh, that means they're going faster. But you can probably see here fairly quickly that it's not exact because if you look at like Aaron and Carissa, they are the fastest time, but they weren't the heaviest. And so there probably are some differences in timing. You know, if, I, if you don't click the timer just right, you could be off by a little bit. Uh, the weights are probably off a little bit. They could be within five pounds or so. So it's not exact, um, but it definitely looks like there's something going on here creating a pattern and that's what you're kind of looking for. Alright so I have pulled up the graph that Excel created here and one thing I love about graphs is it's so easy to see if there is a pattern, if there is some kind of a trend. You know we looked at the chart and we're like yeah something's going on here it looks like boom it only takes us like a second or two and it, it becomes super obvious that there is there is a path or a trend I mean there's this downhill slope to this line. Now the first thing you might notice here is that this data point is kind of far away from that. Remember that's that 5.2 seconds that we saw Aaron and Carissa have um, on the chart. And so yeah, it's a little bit farther away, but not all the points are right on the line. You don't expect that. Some are above, some are below. What we're looking for is like the average point. Is there overall a trend going on? I've drawn in this trend line uh, for this. It maybe isn't straight. Uh, it's hard to say right now, but a straight line seems to fit okay for now. Um, so what I want you to think about really is two things, two questions here. One, what does the steepness of this line tell us? Or in other words, if this line was steeper, something like that, what would that mean? Or if it was less steep, what would that mean? So how is the steepness important? And the second thing, second question I want you to figure out is if I extend this line out here, something like that, what does the point where it crosses the vertical axis tell us? Does that mean anything? So those two questions for you. Uh, answer them in the comments or feel free to email me at chris at stokedaboutscience.com. Alright, I love it when we get cool results like that, especially because it was a question that we came up with on our own. Does the weight affect 
how fast you go on a water slide, and we came up with results that, yeah, it seems to. Uh, now, what's weird about this is it doesn't really fit very well with our model or idea of how friction affects things. Uh, if there is no friction, then the amount of mass or weight that someone has going down a water slide shouldn't matter at all. Everyone should get going to this, get going the same speed. If there is friction, then our simple model of friction says that things that are heavier, that get smashed into surfaces more, are going to have more friction. So heavier things should go slower and take a longer time. But we didn't see that at all. We saw things that were heavier went faster. So there's something going on here that I don't really understand. I want to see if we can figure this out. And I've noticed the same kind of thing happens if you are uh, tubing in the winter, that heavier uh, people on tubes seem to go faster or farther. But that's another story. We'll get to that uh, in another six months or so. So I need you guys' help here. I want to try this experiment and have you try it. So if you can go to a water park where there's water slides and you can time yourself going down you know, some of those slides where you race side by side or down any of the slides and collect data, that would be awesome. Or if you have some plastic or a water slide you can put on a hill or something, um, that'd be great too. Just remember that you need to keep everything that you can the same. Uh, same kind of tube or mat. Um, don't do a running start, start from rest. Uh, use the same distance, doesn't have to be the same distance I use, but for you, use the same distance for every run. Same kind of timing mechanism or timer that's doing it, the same person. And we'll see if we can figure this out. Um, if you liked this episode, then be sure to subscribe on my YouTube channel or on my website, SoakedAboutScience.com. Hey, thanks for watching.